Hey everyone, Clint Lee here for the Bauman Letter with the next edition of Your Money Matters. Uh, yes, I am going it alone today. Ted recently traveled back to South Africa and he is getting the, uh, the homestead in order. Uh, he's doing fine. He sent me a picture the other day of the view uh, from his house and it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the one thing that really stuck out uh, to me in the picture is just how green everything is. I forgot that it is uh, summertime down there. Meanwhile, uh, here in Ohio, uh, just outside my window, uh, we're right in the middle of an ice storm, but the, the ice storm is uh, supposed to wind down here soon and transition to snow and dump about six to eight inches of snow on us by the time uh, we're done with this storm on Friday morning. So uh, summertime is uh, sounding awfully good right about now. Uh, today, before we jump in, uh, just as a reminder, if you see the, uh, the little eye, uh, the link above my left hand shoulder, uh, my left shoulder, it's on the top right of your screen. Uh, you can click on that link, learn how to get started uh, with the Bauman letter, you know, for our model portfolio, for our investment recommendations. Uh, a lot of times it just, it comes back to first looking at uh, the big picture and where that can lead us to opportunities. And so that's what I wanna talk about today. I wanna talk about uh, sort of the, the big picture of where we stand in the market right now. I wanna talk about some of the areas and I've seen a, a pretty steep a peak to trough decline already and if uh, those areas are offering up uh, opportunities and if not where might we, we find uh, those opportunities so what i want to talk about is what i want to start with today is some of the more speculative uh, areas of the stock market you know all the all the talk of you know we're, we're in a bubble uh, but we've already seen you know once again especially in more speculative areas of the stock market a, a pretty sizable peak to trough decline i mean you can argue that uh, growth stocks, more speculative growth stocks, peaked out a year ago, uh, back in February of 2021. Uh, and we've seen large declines uh, in other, once again, the more speculative assets as well. So here's a chart real quick. This comes from the Heisenberg Report, just highlighting what the size, the magnitude of the decline that we've seen of 50% or more um, across some of these different asset categories. I mean, looking at areas like ARK, uh, Bitcoin, and some other crypto on there. Uh, solar stocks, you know, we've seen the renewable energy space pulling back sharply, uh, chi Chinese tech stocks, uh, the pot sector, you know, so just highlighting, you know, these more speculative areas of the market have already seen, you know, a magnitude of 50% of peak to trough declines already. And so you know, ha have we already seen uh, a bursting of the bubble and are there opportunities uh, to be had here? And, you know, certainly if, if you're going to comb through uh, you know, some of these indexes, some of these ETFs, you're going to be able to find opportunities. But uh, collectively, and I want to focus more specifically on the growth stock space, collectively, uh, we still have some excesses out there. And so uh, the next table I want to show comes from Verdot Advisors. And they put together their own bubble 500 to kind of mimic, you know, we always talk about the S&P 500. Well, they put together a bubble 500 uh, of stocks, of, of very, real expensive stocks and, and hyped up growth sectors. And I want to show you, you know, just how valuation metrics look, uh, even despite the pullback uh, that we've seen, these, these, you know, these, these large peak to trough declines that we've already seen in this space. Um, things are still collectively expensive. So here's that table. Uh, the one figure I'd point to first uh, is enterprise value to sales. You know, enterprise value is a, a good measure because it takes in consideration a company's market cap uh, in addition to net debt uh, on the balance sheet. So you know all sources of, of capital, stripping out cash. Uh, relative to sales, you see the bubble 500 uh, on here still trades at over 12 times uh, compared to the S&P 500 at 3.3 times. You know, these, these stocks, they, they work for a while because of a favorable macroeconomic backdrop, a good, uh, you know, low rate environment. Uh, and because you could get a lot of growth here, I mean, you can still see uh, the revenue projections, the three-year revenue uh, compound growth rate, the two-year forward revenue growth, uh, far outpacing uh, the S&P 500. But what matters right now uh, is valuations and profits. Valuations are, are expensive, and you can see various measures of profitability, like earnings yield, uh, net interest margin, and return on assets at the bottom, uh, all in negative territory. You know, so despite the large declines that we've seen in the space, that the growth space, uh, in particular, is you know, by by many measures uh, still way overvalued relative to the S and P 500. Now. When you look at the broad, now let's look at the broader market itself uh, because we've seen a, a really rough start uh, to 2022, uh, one of the worst starts on record. We saw the S&P 500 uh, only in about 15 trading days uh, reach correction territory, at least on an intraday basis last week, uh, reaching correction territory. 
We've seen a, a, a nice little rally unfold off, off the lows that we hit last week. Uh, but I just want to show you with, with the decline that we did see uh, what this did to the price to sales ratio of just the, the broader market. So let's you know, shift from talking about you know, some of these more speculative areas of the market to just looking at the broader market in general. And so here's a price to sales ratio for the S&P 500 going back. If you look at the very right hand side, I mean, you can see you know, just that, that little blip on the chart. That's what the correction did. Uh, to the price to sales ratio. So still uh, extremely elevated to what we've seen uh, in the past, at least going back uh, 20 years or so on here. And so what matters right now is that the valuations are justified with earnings growth. And that's where another concern starts to set in, you know, especially as we've progressed through uh, a couple earnings seasons now as, as the supply chain disruptions, as the inflation picture um, you know, and, and the challenges there. Uh, have emerged. Uh, look at what's been happening with earnings estimates for the S&P 500. So here's a table that shows uh, you know, all the different S&P 500 sectors, but I want to focus just on the index itself. If you look at the very bottom of this table, you'll see the, the S&P 500 overall, and this is how uh, earnings growth projections for 2022 have evolved throughout different points in time going back here. So if you look at all the, on the right hand side, you see in April last year, uh, analysts were expecting about 15% uh, earnings growth for 2022. Uh, July of last year, that dropped to 11.6%. By October, it was at 9.2. And now, you know, since the, the start of the year and, and to today, uh, that number is at 8.4%. So, you know, since April last year, earnings growth estimates for 2022 have been nearly cut in half uh, for the S&P 500. At the same time, you have valuations where they are. And so that is a big reason of why we're seeing all this volatility right here in the market. So you might say, okay, you know, you're, we're making the case that the growth stocks are still expensive. Uh, the market's expensive and now you've got earnings growth rates coming down. Uh, you know, is there, is there anywhere to go? And you know, the answer is yes. And I think this is where, you know, when you look at the big picture, you want to really look for uh, look for, for the longer term signs uh, in sectors and areas of the market uh, that have seen sort of, you know, I'm going to call it you know, this panic selling uh, capitulation that's finally starting uh, to turn around from a, a sustained longer term period of underperformance. That's where you can still find uh, some good opportunities in this market. And I'll give you just a, a couple examples right here. Uh, one is with the energy sector. Now you might say, okay, energy sector had a, a really good 2021, it's had a nice start to 2022. You know, how is this a, a good area, a good value opportunity? Well, it's when you look at energy's longer term performance uh, relative to the S&P 500 uh, and, and some of the, the earnings growth projections and valuations there. So let's start with that longer term performance first. Uh, here's a chart, this comes from uh, Bank of America. Uh, the blue line on here, so this is plotting out the price ratio. Think of it as a relative performance of the energy sector versus the S&P 500 when it's rising, energy is doing better than the S&P, vice versa uh, when it's falling. Now notice this plot goes all the way back to the 1920s. The red dashed line in the middle is how this ratio looks on average, and then the lighter blue lines uh, across the chart here are plotting out the, the two standard deviations levels. So when this ratio starts to hit extremes, uh, either on the upside or the downside. And so if you look uh, just recently, uh, we have fallen to almost a negative two standard deviation event, the lowest uh, since the Great Depression in terms of sustained energy uh, sector underperformance, underperformance against the S&P 500. And you can see that started right around um, the, the, the 2010 decade there, uh, you know, especially underperformance picking up pace, I think sometime after uh, 2014. And so even the, the recent turn in relative performance that we've seen uh, has still left this ratio at, at very depressed levels. And I'm bringing this up because you know, another thing to look for with the energy sector, although we've seen uh, overall market growth rates for earnings this year getting cut, uh, the energy sector is expected to, uh, to put up 42% uh, earnings growth in 2022 versus 2021. And you might say, okay, well, that has to be off of what was still extremely uh, depressed levels for earnings, so those are easy comps. Well, you know, when, when you look at this, uh, energy sector earnings, you know, if, if they hit that growth rate for 2022, That'll put earnings for the sector overall at the highest level since uh, 2014. So, you know, just something to note. Back in 2014, I believe the sector was trading right around or, or just below a uh, 14 PE multiple. Right now, today, uh, that multiple is right around 12. So, 
you know, strong earnings recovery uh, with reasonable valuation after a sustained period of underperformance. You know, that's one area I'm highlighting. Or you can still find opportunities here. Uh, XLE is the, the broader energy sector ETF, uh, XOP, if you want to get more specific into oil and gas exploration names. Uh, one other area I'll, I'll highlight and then we'll be done here is uh, with the international markets. So similar to, to the energy sector, we're looking at uh, longer term uh, sustained periods of outperformance or underperformance uh, with international stocks compared to the U.S. So here's a chart. This comes from J.P. Morgan. And this is plotting out sort of the, you know, when you start to see cumulative sustained periods of outperformance of the U.S. versus international or when international takes a lead. So the, the purple bars on here, you can see this goes all the way back to the 1970s. The purple bars on here is when international, once again, on a sustained basis has, has taken the lead and what that cumulative uh, sustained return looks like uh, over that time. Uh, the darker gray lines on here is when the U.S., uh, is leading. And so if you look at the right hand side, you see we're, we're coming off of, uh, or we're entering this uh, uh, 14 year period uh, of US, of the US stock market is absolutely trouncing uh, international stocks. You know, once again, 14 years, I mean, you can compare the magnitude of, of time and size of outperformance uh, on this chart relative to, uh, to past periods now, on here. But, you know, this is once again creating um, some, some big valuation. Uh, discrepancies as well uh, in international stocks. So another chart here uh, from JP Morgan showing uh, the valuation discount of, uh, of, of international stocks compared to U.S. stocks. And so uh, if you look at the left-hand side of this chart first, um, this is showing that, that discount. Now on average, this goes back about 20 years, on average international stocks do trade at a discount. Uh, to U.S. stocks. That average discount, you know, when you look at this chart, is about 13.2%. Right now, that discount is reaching nearly 33%. That is almost a, a three standard deviation event, which is a very uh, extreme event. So, you know, once again, the, this period of sustain, this long-term period of sustained underperformance of international regions has created a, a huge valuation discrepancy uh, when you look at the, those two markets. You know, that's also showing up on dividend yield as well. So the right-hand side of this chart uh, plots out the difference in dividend yield uh, of the U.S. versus international stocks. And once again, going back 20 years, and you can see we're hitting uh, high levels on here. So, you know, one way to play this, if you want to take advantage um, of the valuation discount along with uh, the, the, the dividend yields uh, in international markets, uh, you can look at the DWX. It's the S&P uh, International ETF. So, you know, once again, there, there's still, you know, a lot of signs, you know, the markets overall are overvalued, despite the cuts that we've seen in the growth space are still, you know, once again, broadly speaking, excessive valuations there, you can find bargains, but you know, if you're, uh, if you're more of a, a passive investor, if you're, if you're looking at ETFs, you know, overall, uh, there could still be some challenges with those segments of the market. And so that's why I highlight, you know, areas that have seen these really long-term sustained uh, trends uh, of underperformance, but that's creating uh, some great opportunities, especially when you start to look at relative valuations as well. And that's why we're here focusing, uh, once again, on the big picture uh, here at the Bauman Letter. That is all I have for you today. This is Clint Lee. Thanks for watching.